David Lee Roth made his Vegas debut, so how did he do? And should he still open for a kiss? Let's go ahead and find out. you are new to my channel, welcome. What I like to do is talk about anything and everything classic rock. If you are not yet subscribed, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button so I can continue to bring you some pretty definitely different classic rock stories. And if you're a returning subscriber, hey, welcome back and thanks for hopping in. David Lee Roth made his Vegas debut at the House of Blues in Vegas on January 8th. That was Wednesday night. So how did Dave do? Oh boy, comments have been crazy. Crazy. A lot of the comments basically say that Dave sucked. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna break down a few of the songs that he did sing in Vegas. Again, we're diving in to see how David Lee Roth actually did during his Vegas debut. So first point being, the guy is 65 years old. Is that what I'm using as an excuse for his performance? No, because let's face it guys, there are other singers out there much older than Dave who sound absolutely Absolutely amazing. Let's take the two Steves. Stevie Nix from Fleetwood Mac and Steven Tyler from Aerosmith. They are absolutely amazing. The two Steve Stevies really still look good as well and you gotta give it to Dave that he has preserved himself very well as well. Very well as well. Well, he has. And I have to give it to him. His stage presence, his being on the stage right off the bat, I give him an A+. The face, the body, he looks dang good. Moving on and into the actual show itself. Matthew Will Kenning from Ultimate Classic Rock. Hopefully I said your name right, Matthew. He was at the first show and said that Dave was engaging throughout. Now I have watched several of the videos from that night. I do have to say that in a way I disagree. No, no. Again, I was not personally there. I'm going according to what I watched from fans that were in the audience and I just didn't feel that connection from Dave to the audience. Yes, he was talking to them. Yes, he was drinking with them. Yes, he was seemingly having a great time. But you know when there's that connection that an artist has with the audience? I wasn't feeling that. Remember, this was night one of his Vegas performance, so we do have to cut him a little slack. From that, he was trying to be funny. He was telling a lot of jokes. So Wednesday, January 8th, it was Elvis Presley's birthday. Dave pulled out a wig resembling Elvis and a big gold belt. I personally think he could have done without the props, but he was paying homage to the king of rock and roll who actually owned the Vegas Strip at one point, so I get that. The wig and belt, they just were not needed. I'm just saying, because it was a bad wig. I'm sure there were a bunch of people in the audience that loved the props and you could hear them laughing and talking. Again, he didn't need them. Let's take a dive into just a few of the songs that Dave did premiere on Wednesday night. Now, when he started to sing just like Paradise. I have to admit, I was hopeful that this was going to be a good match for Dave to sing. I really, really did. And come on guys, Dave is just a happy fella. He's always smiling, the dimples are big and bold. His band, they were spot on with every single song. They were truly amazing. Al Estrada, he's actually Dave's lead guitarist. He's from the Van Halen tribute band Eruption. Incredible. Definitely a great addition to Dave's show. But when Dave had to go to those higher notes and hold them there, it turned into him screaming the song, which he did not have to do. But then when he started to bring it down, he sounded fine and he started talking like Dave likes to do. He likes to talk the words through songs. It was okay. Again, watching it from my home, I was okay with him doing that because it sounded better than him screaming and screeching the main lyrics of the song. And I noticed that Dave did do a lot of talking to his audience, which is cool. He People love to hear stories, but he did talk about dogs having eyebrows and how it's a great thing that dogs have eyebrows because you can actually feel and know what dogs are thinking because they can make facial expressions compared to cats who do not have eyebrows. So then he went on to compare cats to being like strippers because strippers also have no facial expression. I wouldn't know that because I just watched the J-Lo movie Hustlers and she had a lot of expression in that movie. So what this kind of tells me of Dave comparing cats to strippers 
strippers is that maybe Dave has done a lot of practicing his singing in front of strippers because they do not have any facial expression and he has no idea how he's really doing. We do know guys that Dave is known for forgetting the words to his song. My whole thought on that, if he practiced more and knew the words, at least most of the words to the songs because there were a lot of moments where he did forget the words and stop screaming, it would help him a lot. I'm not saying little, I think it would help a lot. Immerse yourself into the songs, immerse yourself into the music and all of the rest will follow. And I go back to the fact that Dave is just a happy, happy guy and the audience was cheering him on after each and every single song, but were they cheering him on because they really enjoyed what they were seeing and hearing or were they cheering him on because you know how when you feel bad for somebody and you just want to boost their self-confidence and just say, you know what? Keep going, keep doing what you do. Was that why they were cheering him on after every single song? I really don't know. Let's face it, everybody is already there in Vegas. They've already bought their tickets. They've already booked their hotels, their flights, everything, time off of work. They're gonna go and try to have as great of a time as they can. I just would love to talk to some of the people who were actually at that show to see what their real thoughts were. But when he pulled out and did dance the night away, did someone not say to him, rely on the backing vocals, please? Please. Love the backing vocals. Be the backing vocals. Live the backing vocals. Screaming. He was just screaming the song and I just don't understand. He did not have to do that. And when the backing vocals, it sounded to me like they were backing vocals from his original recordings. They could have helped him sound so much better if that was all worked out. And I do have to go because I'm a sound person doing the whole radio thing and the YouTube thing and working with sound for many, many years. I cannot tell you. If you guys go, I'll link a couple of the videos that I did watch down below. I cannot tell you how many times I heard feedback during David's show. That would have completely wrecked my, if I was performing, which I'm not, thank goodness, you would not want to see that. That was me performing and I had as much feedback as I did, I would have lost my mind. And I would have actually loved to have seen Dave stop the show and say, listen, we gotta fix this, this sound problem here. So much feedback during every single song. If it happened once, okay, fine. But to happen two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 times is way too much for an audience to have to deal with feedback. And I'm hoping it was just working the kinks out, first show stuff. Off. Was this not rehearsed? Was there not a sound check? You just have to really take a step back and wonder if all of these things did happen. Jump. Now you gotta figure this is the song that the crowd was waiting for probably all night long. They wanted to see him do jump. They wanted to see him do splits midair. That did not happen. He did do a leg kick, which again, apparently he still got a really good leg kick. I think so. And I think the good thing about him doing jump was that he mostly spoke it. He didn't really sing it. And I think that kind of helped that sound better than a lot of the other songs that he did. This was his last song of the night, so he was blowing kisses, he was thanking the crowd for coming, and Dave being Dave, you know, everybody seemed, you know, they were hooting and hollering, they were really happy about it, but guys, the voice was just, it was, it was not good. He did seem to get more comfortable with the songs and with the audience as the night went on. Again, probably first night jitters, everybody's gonna have them. Should David Lee Roth still open for Kiss. It's out there. Kiss just actually put out another video. I'm filming this on Saturday. They put out another promo video yesterday on YouTube about David Lee Roth opening for them. So yeah, it is happening. Totally my thoughts and my thoughts alone. We all know that Dave has a great stage presence. Again, he looks good. He's kept himself looking great. The voice, okay, we can deal with that. You can work with that. Wasn't someone telling him, Dave, look, you're you really shouldn't be screaming the lyrics to the songs. Let's work on it this way. I feel like that just didn't happen. Maybe Dave is just not the type of guy that takes direction and he wants to do it himself. I honestly have no idea, but I think there should be a person who should be saying to him, this needs to change. Also, what I was looking at the show itself from the few clips that I did see, he really didn't have a direction on the stage either. There was no, there was no performance 
footprint. You know when you go to a show, any concert really, any really well done show, there is a plan in place and I feel like there was no, there was no plan in place at all. He just kind of wung or winged, wanged, he wanged, he wanged the entire show. And you really, you can't do that because again, people are paying money to go see you. So you gotta have a good plan in place. You gotta rehearse, you gotta practice, you gotta know your songs. I think that is so, so, so important and you have to have great sound. That makes the show, that helps to, that's one of the components that helps to make a great show. Am I downing Dave? Absolutely not. There are so many comments, totally mean out there. And then there are the comments, you know what Dave, keep doing what you're doing, keep going. I am on that side of the fence. I really believe in David Lee Roth. I am so glad to see him out there again. But my personal opinion, him opening for Kiss, Kiss fans are not going to take kindly to him not having his plan in place. Kiss fans will not appreciate the fact that he's not singing properly. They will not appreciate the fact that he doesn't have a real show to do. Again, people are spending a lot of money on these tickets. People are super excited to go see Kiss. They're excited to go see Diamond Dave. You gotta deliver. We know right off the bat, Kiss delivers. Kiss puts on a phenomenally great show. But again, they rehearse, they practice, their plan is in place. Dave needs to get himself someone really strong behind him who can give him constructive criticism and point him in the right direction. So that's where I stand on this whole thing. I have no idea where you guys stand. Maybe you'll be mad at what I've said. Maybe you'll say, you know what? You don't know what you're talking about. And that's perfectly fine. That's why it's great. We all have our own opinions. From seeing what you have seen, David Lee Roth in Vegas, should he still open for Kiss? Or should they maybe think about getting someone else? Or if David gets his stuff together and gets someone super strong behind him, do you think he can be fixed? I think it can happen. Guys, thanks so much for hanging out. Again, please hit that subscribe button, like, comment, share, and whatever so I can keep bringing you some crazy classic rock stories. Have a great day, a great night, a great weekend, a great everything. And as always, remember guys, most importantly, to keep rocking.